Good morning. Good morning. It is so great to have you both here finally. I feel like we've already met. I mean, we did a few minutes ago, but we've been playing you so much lately and following you and love it. We're, well, re we're really excited to be here, you guys. You guys are so fun already. It doesn't even feel like we got up at 6.30 to get uh, here. Oh, good, because you were out late last night. What was going on there? We were just hanging with President Bill Clinton. Ah, uh, is that the first time you met him? It was the first time. It was and it was what else, not just the first time, but it was something that I couldn't have told you, hey, I want to meet you know President Bill Clinton in my life. I would never have even thought it would be a possibility. Right. And then it just it happened, and it was so wonderful, and he was, he was just gracious and lovely, and Tegan and I felt really lucky. What did he say? What did you say? Did you say the right thing? Are you regretting <laughs> what you said? I don't know what I'm saying. About like 15 seconds after they came to collect us to go meet him, a button on my dress shirt like busted like off, so I spent the whole time ma mainly protecting the part of my shirt where the button had. Oh, he made that happen. Uh, I was very powers. distracted. I, I mean, it was Dude. honestly so many people, like, I, I, I feel like could make incredibly funny jokes about it but the whole time I couldn't even make a joke out of it I was just kind of embarrassed I was like I look so shoddy why don't but he was really nice he said he said that he wanted to tell us two things one that he was a big fan of Grey's Anatomy and that that's why he knew who we were mm -hmm. and then he also thanked us for all the work we'd done in the LGBT community yes. which was extremely um I mean, it was like a very heartfelt moment. And it was a very lovely thing for him to say. And my mom was very proud when we told her that. And he very was good. an extremely lovely and articulate man. He spent a few minutes with us. And it was uh, honestly, it was truly, truly a highlight. It was okay. wonderful. And, and you got to perform acoustically for him. We did, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. It was actually a really lovely evening when I got in bed last night. I was like, our job's cool. Yeah, it is cool. And Rachel McAdams was there, too? She was. She's so pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And talk about the event. What was it for? Okay, so the Clinton Foundation. So um, specifically last night, it was uh, their Millennium... Um, did I just say millennium wrong? I, I did. Know, yeah, early. it is early, okay, you early. Guys. I said it was a Canadian accent. Um, anyways, the, it was wonderful, and it was you know it was the, it, Clinton's speech was very like broad. You know, he was talking about environmental stuff, and you know, I guess sort of like thinking about the world and what you want to contribute and how you can contribute. And he actually said this really wonderful thing that I thought was um, particularly um, poignant about you know just because you can't sol solve all of the world's problems doesn't mean that you can't solve some of them. Right. And I thought that was really special. Because because, you know, as 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 artists, it's been important to us to pick some causes that we think that we can sort of like ally with and advocate on behalf of. And um, sometimes it feels like there's a million and you mm -hmm. want it. You want to do everything and you want to help as many people as you can. But you can sort of you can pick something specialized and you can focus your energy on it and you can you can contribute and help. Where did you get that focus, mom? I mean, our, our family is all incredibly um political you know and my dad my, my mother and father both have very different ideas about politics but I think the enthusiasm and the you know and the part like I guess the educational part of it knowing right. what you care about and and, the, and being able to speak about it both of them had that so. right dinner table conversations uh, that went awry sometimes what I guess on, we generally uh, didn't sit around a table but uh, okay but when you got together yeah, by table you mean the TV yes. yeah okay fine that's good we I were gotcha. raised, my mom was a single parent so there was you know there was definitely um, you know she, she kind of put it in our heads very 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 early on to be empowered and and to be articulate and definitely know who you are and what you are and mm -hmm. she, as she always would scream at us when we'd done something bad don't go back to university as an adult you don't want to fail out of school right now so she was a good you know she was a constant life lesson to keep getting well, together you can tell how solid she was because is, you're yeah. very comfortable in your own skin and you've done a lot for the LGBT community as you say yeah. and you're very outspoken in that way your music's not really that political but socially you are engaged and I think that is that is so cool and I was reading yesterday Thanks. Same-sex marriage became legal in England, did it not yesterday? I believe it did. And in France last week. We were actually hanging out with Bill Clinton, so I really actually don't know. <laughs> I know. Name he, dropping he, again. And, and he popped a button off your shirt from another yeah. room, so yeah, what so does that tell you? I was super busy last night, but, um, <laughs> but we are flying to London tonight, so I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah that's you know, exciting. But you've taken a vow not to get married until everybody can. It's true. My girlfriend was not impressed when that headline nope. came out. <laughs> but I was like, I abs I, we're abstaining <laughs> in, in solidarity with millions. She was like, cool. So do I still get half? Oh, yeah, why not? <laughs> I love what Tegan just said about her hairdresser. You've been, you, it's you that's been in the long-term relationship. No, no, oh, it was me. Sarah? I'm it sorry, was Sarah. Me. Yes, Sarah, say that that's again. Fine. I, I, well, we were, we're talking, talking about, about hair. Yes. And hair. I said, and somebody at, uh, <laughs> at my show said, boy, ask where they get their hair cut because they love their hair. <laughs> and you said. I said that I've had the same woman cutting my hair for eight years, and it is the longest <laughs> monogamous relationship I've ever been in. And she does a wonderful job. And I have straight a few times, and she knows. Like, I'll come back, and I'll yeah. be like, oh, my God, I need a haircut. And she'll be like, 
who cut your hair? Yeah. I can tell. Like, yeah. they don't like it. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, whatever, they so. do know, don't yeah. they? You give them product. Yeah. I hate you. So tell us about this album uh, that, you know, Heartthrob. Why call it Heartthrob? Uh, and, you know, tell me more about that because the songs are great on it. We love them already. Thank you. Well, you know, Sarah and I have been making music together since we were teenagers mm -hmm. and we've released six records. And, you know, back when we were 18, 19 years old, we chose the indie rock path and we signed with Neil Young's label and we spent a lot of years developing our craft and developing developing, um, you know, a rapport with our audience. And I think that when it came time to make Heartthrob, we just didn't want to make the same kind of record we'd made before. We really, as you said, we felt comfortable in our skin and we felt like it was time to to step up to the plate and really try to, um, you know, knock something out of the park. Mm -hmm. You know, we threw around words like, we want to make a classic Tegan Tegan and Sarah record, a classic Tegan record. Sarah, <laughs> she she didn't. I'm like, what's your name again? <laughs> um, we're getting old, so it's hard to it's hard oh. to remember all the details that we really wanted. You know, this is our last hurrah. So no, we just no. we just felt like it was time to make a bigger record, reach more people, like travel more places, and hopefully, you know, uh, hopefully change change the face of mainstream pop music. Not a big deal. Yeah, not a big deal. <laughs> just uh, another big uh, one small change. Just a small change. That's in all the, that's the, what Clinton the, said. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I, I met Bill. It inspired me. I was like, let's make a pop. Record. Okay, let me ask you this. Because you are sisters, do you write differently? Do you write separately? How does that process work? So we've always written separately from one another. We we, we also live in, in different cities, so mm -hmm. a lot of our songwriting and our recording and demoing is done. Um, you know, away from each other. And then often what we'll do is we'll sort of get together maybe like 75, 80% into the process mm -hmm. and we'll start to give each other feedback. You know, maybe Tegan will have like um, melodic ideas or she'll say like, I don't think the chorus is really doing it for me. Can you try this or that? Mm -hmm. So um, the songs sort of end up being Tegan songs or Sarah songs, but we really do contribute. And in a way, we kind of almost produce or edit each other a little bit. And, That's good. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been a wonderful resource, I think, to always have somebody who I, I really trust and I don't ever feel the competition is I always say the competition between us is almost like the competition between people playing tennis you know like without the other one there to you know return the ball Turali, yeah. you're not really playing a game you, know? make and, you better yeah it's yeah. Uh, it's true and so Safe. I feel like the, anything that Tegan is giving me feedback on even if I'm irritated by her and I think she's ultimately wrong you know I think it's it does sharpen thing. it does sharpen my <laughs> argument. You know, so How long have you good. been twins now? <laughs> <laughs> Keep do it up. You, do you ever pull okay, I was born a couple minutes earlier than you. Do you ever pull out game or no, no? Actually we've been we've been I think that our whole lives, you know, we've <laughs> almost felt self conscious about not being well well Darren was bringing up before the before we came on air. We don't feel like we're as twinny as people like we look like twins, but not even to each other. We it's almost like Sarah's just this person that looks like me that follows me around. <laughs> Like, I can't read your mind, and, like, I can't, we don't Do play any stuff, fun yeah. switcheroo games. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, we almost didn't, like, take, we didn't really, like, we didn't really utilize this whole twin thing. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll, maybe later in life we'll become those weirdos that dress the same and marry sisters or something. <laughs> who's the one, who's the one that coordinates her outfits to complement her tattoos? Well, I, uh, this is Tegan speaking, I, I definitely feel that when I started getting tattoos, I did not, think long and hard about what it would be like to be an adult with tattoos so all the kids listening out there think long and hard so what do you regret the most what well, color <laughs> probably because you yeah you I, when I put on a colorful shirt I just feel like someone took like 10 paint cans and sprayed it all over me so and I'm a Virgo and I'm OCD so I feel like my tattoos clash with everything so I either have to wear sleeves or black clothes but so I mean yeah just think just when you're thinking about getting a tattoo just think no color I was gonna say what message do you have your for your fans but I think you just did it right that's there. probably that and thin your hair out if you're you know like as a teenager I wish someone had, had come to Sarah and I and said hey if you want to go without really Really long cut and thick hair that's fine but you'd look better if you just thinned it out a little bit your hair's too thick <laughs> your hair looks puffy you know it's growing in this triangle I don't know my mom was very stylish I don't know why she didn't just say hey you guys look ridiculous let's yeah. thin your hair because out. you have to go through that stage yeah. come on yeah. we need it. to get you to to walk your we hair do. over to the microphones <laughs> over do here it. Let's do it. You've been on tour with fun this summer. You've yes. been headlining for uh, for for the past ten years in North America mm -hmm. uh, for groups like Cindy Lauper, uh, Neil Young, The Pretenders, Killers, City and Color, Weezer. I mean, it's just incredible. Things are going so great. I know that uh, your fan base includes Taylor Swift. Yeah. Called you inspiring. Katy Perry's a huge fan. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves you guys. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty lovely time to be Tegan and Sarah. So you'll be uh, on the road and you'll be reading lots of books this summer, as uh, Sarah is wont to do. <laughs>
It's true. I'm a real bookworm. I mean, I feel like people think Tegan's illiterate because I have the book book club, but Tegan does also know how to read. She does? Especially okay. if there's a picture involved. Like, if there's just, like, text I'm underneath. I'm with Tegan on picture. that one. I gotta yeah. tell you. What's the book you're reading now? Because everyone's going to email me wanting to know. Oh, you know, I'm actually reading a Joyce Carol Oates uh, book um, called Unboxing, and it's, it, I think it came out, it must have come out in, like, the 60s mm -hmm. or the okay. 70s. And what's the one that had you laughing hysterically like a really weird person on an airplane? Oh my god. Okay, so this was this was a book called, this was a collection of essays um uh called Pulphead and it was actually an essay about a guy who um goes to uh Creation. It's the biggest Christian music gathering festival and right. he has to rent an RV and it had me in absolute um stitches on an airplane and I was the most annoying person on the airplane. You were yeah. escorted off the plane. Basically, they were like, ma'am, <laughs> Alec Baldwin, have you heard this story, please? Do you, you want became, that to happen to you? You became you know? that person. Well, and people can go to your website, too. You guys have a great yes. website. Yeah. People, and I know that on your blog, you talk about all these books, so it's all there, too. I want to give a shout-out to the people that were supporting you when you were singing that song. Absolutely. Say hello to them for us yeah. and introduce. John Spence, who is playing keyboards, actually here from Toronto. Hi, John. John. Yeah, nice good. to see you. Yeah. Lovely, handsome young fella. And, and on very, guitar? Very talented. And on guitar, we have Ted Gowans. He's been with Tegan yeah. and Sarah for eight years. Oh. Doesn't look it, though. Jeez. Looks like he just, just graduated high school. <laughs> you must treat him well. Do you like books with pictures or without pictures? Is that what we need to know?